this time is yours. Let's stand and go before the Lord and ask Him to do it.
taking care of your business because you know you got to put away all that other stuff you maybe did in the past and start being more serious about life. Yes, because sir. we're not getting any younger. Right. Amen. And we're not getting any younger. And, and you got to start thinking about things more seriously, more honestly, and more openly. Seriously, honestly, and openly. And uh, so it's, it's, it's such a blessing. And you know what's so amazing about, about God? Uh, you think about Sunday, how, how God just blessed and, and how God just, so many good things are happening here in McKee's Rocks. I think about how the church is growing, but the community is growing too. Yes. Right around us. Yes, sir. That just goes to show you, I believe we're in the right place. At the right time, doing the right thing. Yes. And then we got there's building going on, catty corner from here, and uh, there's other things going on around the area. Uh, the, the bottoms is getting better. I know what is that. that going to be Say again. What is that building going to be? I'm not really sure what it's going to be. Some type of um, um, warehouse or something, maybe. I'm not sure, but it'll be new. <laughs> <laughs> You know, all we care about down here is we're tired of old eyesores. Yeah. Tear things down, but as long as it's not something, you know, as long as it's something that, that's legitimate business and it's new, we like it. Yes. Because it helps make everything around it better. Amen. It makes the value more things. Yes, sir. Better. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And, uh, Amen. and that's what we want. Growth, expansion. Uh, yeah, newness, all of that. And all that is happening around us. Yes, sir. And, uh, and it's just wonderful when you yeah. think about all that God is doing. And uh, good things are happening here. Yeah. And we're excited yeah. about it. We're thankful. And, and we know it's all because of God. Yes, we, sir. We understand yes, that. sir. And yeah. uh, it's just, we're so excited. We appreciate your love. We appreciate your uh, commitment. We appreciate your faithfulness. Amen. And get involved. Be a part. Participate. Yes. Put, you know, put yourself into the work of God. Amen. Yes. You will not regret investing yourself Amen. in the work of God. Amen. Amen. And that's a fact. You will not regret investing in the work of God. And um, it just feels so good. I, I, I received since Sunday. That's all right, brother. That's not the first time I've been Are you right? I'm telling you. I, I've gotten so many calls, so many calls just since Sunday of this issue and that issue and that problem and that thing. And I say, God, that's what it's all about. Yes, Pastor, would you pray with me about this? Or yes. uh, I have this concern. Amen. That's the ministry. Amen. Amen. That's the ministry. Amen. And uh, and even as I was sharing with you, as we was ministering on Sunday, sometimes you just preach and you don't really think a whole lot about it. You don't really know if you're helping people or not sometimes. You really don't. You just preach and do what God gives you to do. And after service, two of the guys from the gig <laughs> came up to me and, and and here I am thinking that I'm ministering to people about their young children, about it, and they talking to me about their grown children. Yes, sir. <laughs> like, Pastor, would you pray with me about, about this? Uh, my, my, my such and such and so, this is going, and I'm thinking, they're sitting back there, and, and, uh, and they were just saying about, and they even stayed for fellowship. Yes. They, and, 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 and I got messages from, from them, two or three of them. They said we enjoy the, the people made us feel at home. Yes. And, uh, and I love that. Thank you, Jesus. Because that's what it's about. They yes. fellowship, they stay, they ate Amen. Us. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and the guy actually, I told the guy I wanted King James Version. He said we ordered them specially for you. Wow. Mm -hmm. That was nice. What yeah, a blessing. Because I asked him for some more. <laughs> because there was, there was, we ran out. Yeah. And, uh, and he, he's going to get us some more. And I wanted to get for all the guys in the military, I wanted to get the one with the, with the um, camouflage. camouflage yeah. on. So he 
he said he'll work on it. So, so uh, you know, I said, man, because the guys in the military kind of like, I like, I like the one that they had that he gave me. I really like it, you know, so I, he, he's working on that. So, because yeah. he's supposed to meet me over here. He, the one that left his Bible here. So, right. And so just be praying, Amen. Mr. John, John Sanders. Left his Bible here. So, but anyway, God is good. Yes, he Amen. Is. You keep praying. You keep believing God. Amen. And um, we're, we're going we're to break this record by the end of the year. Amen. I mean, by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Um, and I was just thinking about this place was past Sunday. Yes, sir. Amen. And we were still missing some of our regular people. But then you figure the holiday and all these different things, yes. God is really good. Yes, God, yes. God is good. Yes. Amen. Amen. And uh, we're excited about the kids. Yes. The new uh, yes. the room upstairs. Can't keep the letters on the wall. <laughs> Gotta figure it out. I don't know what's going on with that. You know, you do all that work. You do all that work. You know it's going to be something. <laughs> Nothing goes as planned. I'm telling you. You always the best to make plans of mice and men. You know, they, it's like you do all this work of uh, painting and doing the floor, and you can't keep the letters on the wall. <laughs> How about that? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But we'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll figure it out by the grace of God. Yeah. Amen. Because we want things to be nice yes. for God's people, for the children, yes. for the community. Yeah. And we want to, in the near future, establish a... Um, a youth group. I want to say something and then I'm going to give them step aside. Um, how many of you were aware that we had a long day Sunday afternoon? It was long, it was a long day Sunday afternoon. And it, it, it was possibly in my mind to not have church because it was such a long day Sunday and we have to come right back at six. And there have been times that we have done that. Uh, hold on just a minute. I want to share. I want to share something. Really. About the youth group. Okay, that's fine. That's wonderful. I, I, I want people to. No, uh, I said, who told you about that? Nobody. It's this. It's, it's what's the, oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start with that. Now you're gonna break me down on pretty poor people thinking about it. Yeah, I, I, I still see that picture of them sitting up in the bed. And us, us, us walking in there, we're laughing and having fun and praying and all of that. The last time I saw them, we prayed, we laughed, we had a good time. Yes, we had sir. a good time. But um, uh, speaking of the youth group, uh, we got a lot of young people starting to come to church now. But anyway, so, so, so Dave, I thought, man, it's been a long day. Maybe we won't have a 6 o'clock service. And, um, and, and um, we had talked about it, Brother Steele, we was all, you know, because, you know, we're all, we're human, you know what I'm saying? And um, and so, you know, my, but my wife, you know, we would, we would just say, well, um, it would be, it probably wouldn't be wrong to do it, but I, I don't know, I, I, it, it's like, sometimes you're like, I can't, I, I, we, we better have church. And I'm glad we did that. Yes, For all of you that were not here, we had church Sunday night. Sister um, Tracy. Sister Tracy came back, and she brought a daughter. She brought her daughter, and she brought another young lady. Both of them had children, had little, and they both prayed for salvation. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. It's like, man. You know, yeah. that, that's how serious this is. That's right. Amen. You know, sometimes your body might not feel like doing something. Or in your mind, you may think, man, I'll do it another time. Or I'll take care of it later. Or maybe, you know, but but do, what, do what's right. Amen. Amen. Even if you don't feel like right. it. That's right. Do what's wow. right. Yes, sir. And God will reward you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. I was thinking about those, yes. two, those two young girls. They even stayed around and talked to us yes. at the service. And they had two yes. nice little kids. They were running around. And I was thinking, man, what if we didn't have service? Yes, what, what, what if something happened to them that night? Oh. And 
and they never got a chance to come. Right. But they came and they prayed Hallelujah. and everything. And I was just thinking, oh God, that's what this is all about. Yeah. I said, that's what this is all about. Hallelujah. About the soul of men and women. Amen. God Hallelujah. is interested in saving souls. Yes. Not in us pampering our flesh. Yes, sir. Did I get a witness? Amen. God is not into us pampering our flesh. Yes, sir. Yes, he is sir. into us helping him to save souls. Amen. Now, that doesn't mean there might not be times where you might, you know what I'm saying, there might be times. But typically, if you should do something, you should do it. That's right. Amen. Yes, sir. Even if you don't feel like, you don't feel like praying, pray. You don't feel like reading your Bible, read your Bible. Things like, you know what I'm saying, things that you know you need to do, that's, that's proper to do and all that, you really need to do that. Amen? Because once you start it, then, then it's kind of like we were in Bible school, but still, and uh, we were in Bible school, every class that we took, we had to type the notes for the next class. And sometimes the flesh feel like typing on notes, man. Mm -hmm. But then once we got, once I got started, I was fine. It was just that initial get behind the typewriter. Back then, we couldn't use, word, couldn't use a word processor or a computer. We had to use a regular typewriter. Oh, hey. These young people now, they got good. <laughs> they got good. I had an old Olivetti, and I used to have to use them little eraser strips you put in your
Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink, and carried that silver and gold and raiment, and went and hid it, and came again and entered into another tent, and carried thence also, and went and hid it. Then they said one to another, We do not well. This day is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come, that we may go and tell the king's household. So they came and called unto the border of the city, and they told them, saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, neither voice of man, but horses tied and asses tied, and the tents as they were. And I want to read verse 4 again. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 4. If we say we will enter into the city, then the fountain is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. And then I want to read over in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. And verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Serve you, please, Christ. Heavenly Father, I thank you for allowing us to be in your house one more time. I, I ask God that you will anoint your servant afresh. I pray that your spirit will unction him to preach in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. I pray, God, that your will will be accomplished in this service, this night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. William Shakespeare was born on or about, it's uncertain, April 23rd, 1564, and he died April 23rd, 1616. He was an English playwright, poet, and actor. Probably heard of him. A lot of people have. And he wrote, one of the plays that he wrote was Hamlet, between the years of 1599 and 1601. It is recognized as one of the most powerful plays in English theater. Yes. And basically the summary of the play is the ghost of the King of Denmark tells his son Hamlet to avenge his murder by killing the new king. Hamlet's uncle. Hamlet feigns madness. He contemplates death and seeks revenge. His uncle, fearing for his life, also devises plots to kill Hamlet. And to be or not to be, which is what I was going to entitle this, but I did not. Well, the Lord gave me a title. I purposely did not say it yet. Is the opening phrase of a speech given by Prince Hamlet in the so-called nunnery scene. It's a soliloquy. Basically, him speaking out loud, it typically happens in the play, whether there's hearers there or not. And he, it, it basically means to be or not to be. What he was saying was, it's to live or to die, yeah. in plain English. Yes. I mean, you're going to live or die. And as I mentioned, he contemplated death, and not only death, but especially by suicide, oh. weighing the pain and unfairness of life against the alternative, which might be worse. And that alternative uh, would, would, 
what made it worse in his mind is the unknown in his mind, in his mind, of the afterlife. Yes. And he says in the play, one of the lines, but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather rather bear those wills we have than to fly to others that we know not of. The unknown. And as I was putting together this message that God gave me, and I, I thought of different poets, which are artists in essence, whether they be a poet who writes poems or someone that paints paintings. And a lot of times, uh, the type of art that they are depending upon what they are affiliated with they are, uh, uh, or as in fictional stories like this one, Hamlet, uh, they're expressing a lot of times how they really feel themselves on the inside through their art, through their artistry. How they really feel. Songwriters do it. They write songs and they write a lot of times about things that they've gone through in their life. Real life experiences. And I was taught years ago, and I'm not saying this is just some blanket statement. Those are some of the best illustrations that a preacher can give are real things that happen to you in your life. Yes. To illustrate in ministering the Word of God. Yes. And whether these things uh, that these artists, whether they be right things uh, 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 and depictions are wrong. Jesus said, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. Yes. And when I, when I thought of this message and the play, as I said, I was going to name it to be or not to be, I, I thought of the expression that you've heard it said before. People say, well, it's not always greener on the other side. You've heard that. <laughs> Meaning that, well, if you're going to do this and make this decision, it may not be better the decision you're going to make. The endeavor that you're going to go into, yeah. so to speak. And tonight, I want to take that in a positive way, and I want to preach on a message entitled, with the help of the Lord that God gave me, the grass is greener on the other side. Yes. God is a master of taking a negative situation or thing and making it a positive thing or a positive situation. Yeah. Making something good out of it. How do I know? I've seen it in my life. And, and maybe you can say it uh, yourself tonight, especially individuals that are saying I remember there was a time in my life, and I talked about it uh, uh, in the Bible study. Uh, uh, last week, I believe it was, uh, my testimony. How that uh, uh, God uh, took me uh, and he, he saved me. He yeah. changed me. Nations that surrounded them, the heathen nations. 
nations and do after the things that they did and go after their gods and follow their gods. They wouldn't live, but they would die and they would be cursed. So we see this king, this heathen king of ben Hadad, he came up with his armies and he, he besieged the city of Samaria. So bad that we read the account here of the king of Israel, Jehoram. He was even walking by one time and a lady cried out unto him. And she said, oh king, she said, I'm going to put it in my arms. I made this deal with another lady here and, uh, because there was no food to eat. And she said, what we'll do is we'll take your son and we'll kill him and boil him and we'll eat him tonight. And then tomorrow night we'll take my son. Uh, 
so we can let in these lepers unto uh, individuals uh, that don't know God. Spiritual lepers. Uh, I was a spiritual leper at one time in my life. Uh, I was uh, uh, cast out and, and separated from God the way they were separated from people, away from God, alienated from God by wicked works uh, in my mind. And we're not sinners because we sin. We sin because we're sinners. Yes. So these men, these lepers, that sat outside the gate, at the entering end of the gate, they said, why sit we here till we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city. And we shall die there. And if we sit uh, still here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. I like that attitude. Basically what they were saying is we're already in a bad, bad condition. We're dying as, as it is. What do we have to lose? That's what they were saying in essence. Uh, they, they set it up uh, where when we come out of the city, 
they're going to come uh, and then uh, they're going to ambush us. But that wasn't the case. Uh, and then he sent forth uh, some men and some chariots to see uh, what was going on. One of these Syrians had gone and he saw their horses and their weapons all uh, laid out in the way. God had made a way and had blessed them. You know, I think about God and the mercy of God. We don't Your life is but a vapor. It vanishes away. What about that 
rich man in the word of God. He had, he had all those riches. And he said, I know what I'm doing with tearing out my barns. Barns are going bigger barns. And I'm going to say to my soul, eat, drink, and be merry. That's what he said. Yeah. But God said, now fool, tonight thy souls shall be required of thee. God is merciful yes, he and a long suffering God. Oh. He's not willing that any should perish, but willing that all men would come to repentance. Yes. That's his will. Not all will do that. Not all will answer that call. But he wants you to come over to his side tonight. The grass is greener on the other side. That's God's side. That's what I'm talking about. Tonight. Oh, yeah. It is greener. It is brighter. There is a brighter future in Jesus. That's the winning side. That's the winning team. I was on the losing uh, side one time, on the losing team. But I came on over to the winning side. We used to sing that song. Yeah. Come on over to the winning side. Aren't you getting tired of losing what? Life's wars? Right. I still love the notes on the face of trying to paint. Some of them. We said, come on over to the winning side. You try the world. You try the things of the world. They don't satisfy. No. They really don't. The pleasures of sin, the Bible says, they last for a season. Yes. Just for a season. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. And I remember it was a slogan on a, new, uh, a, a pizza place in New Jersey years ago when I was a kid. And I think it was on the box. They said, you tried the rest, now try the best. <laughs> you tried the world, now try the best. Where the grass is greener on the other side. Yeah. Who's the best? God is the best. Yeah. Jesus is the Jesus. best. The Father is the best. The Holy Spirit is the best. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I remember being empty before I was a Christian. Walking home from a bar. Really? Just walking home wasn't even real late. Thinking, there's got to be God, be something more. I just feel so empty on the inside. I don't really know anything about God. Yes. I was empty. Yes. I was on the wrong side. Yes. But I came to Jesus. And there's examples in the Word of God of individuals that, can, that, that saw that the grass was greener on the other side. And I'm almost done. Not quite yet. Cornelius was a religious man. We read about him in Acts, I believe it's chapter 10. He was a good man. He was. But God knew. He needed, he needed to hear about Jesus in reality. Maybe. Maybe he thought, on the inside, I don't know. There's got to be something more than what I have. That was good. He was dedicated. He prayed unto the Lord. But he needed something more. He needed Jesus in his life. And God made a way for him. That him and his house could hear the gospel. Peter, you know the story was set to preach the gospel to him and his household. And they were saved and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Nicodemus, another man in the word of God. He was ruler of the Jews and the Pharisees. Another religious man. Remember the Sanhedrin? He was a good man. He knew the law. But he knew that there was something missing. And he came to Jesus by night. And he said, Master, thou, we know that thou art a great teacher come from God. For no man can do the miracles that you do, except God be with him. In other words, there's something different about you. There's something better about what you have than what I have. Really. And I'm putting them in my own words. And Jesus got right to the point. He said, truly, truly, verily, verily, which means truly, truly, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Yes. It's still heaven's greatest requirement tonight. To be born again yes. of the Spirit of God. To accept Jesus. And Paul's another one. Jesus. Another religious man in the Word of God. Persecuting Christians. Having them killed. Dedicated. Thought he was doing service to God. But something happened one day on the road to Damascus. God got his attention. God dealt with his heart. And he gave his heart to Jesus. He said, Saul, Saul, 
Why persecutest thou me? It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. Where's the pricks? The goads. Those spiritual goads. I'm goading your spiritual heart. And Saul, who became Paul, gave his heart to the Lord. He said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And God had an offer him to do. He came on over. He saw that the grass was greener on the other side, on God's side. And he became the author of some 14 books. You count Hebrews, which I believe he wrote, of the New Testament. I have 27, 27 books in the New Testament. And there's others. There's others. And it came to pass what Elijah had said. The people went out, and I'm getting ready to close, and he spoiled the tents of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. God turned things around in 24 hours. Elisha, the man of God, he prophesied, and God kept his word. And the man that doubted God, he was the keeper of the gate. But what happened to him? He was showed upon and killed. Yes, Jesus. Elisha told him, he said, you're going to see, but you're not going to experience it. God kept his word. Tonight, the grass is greener on the other side. Yes. To be or not to be, the quote from Hamlet, to live, that's what it means, or to die. We have a choice tonight. We can choose life, which is in Jesus. Yes. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me, but through me. Yes. Do you want life tonight and not more abundantly? You can find it in Jesus. Come on over to the other side, to the winning side, where the grass is green. On the other side, God bless you tonight. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, let's find a place to pray tonight. The grass is.